Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with Michael Sinoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. The title of this interview is called How to Drink Your Way to Sobriety, a New and Better Approach for Treating Alcoholism. About 1.8 million people die from alcoholism every year, yet until recently there still wasn't a good method for treating the disease besides detox, rehab, and abstinence. Helplessly, addicted people are told every day to just stay sober for as long as they can, and if you relapse, get back on the wagon as fast as you can. This method has about a 15% success rate, and that's probably being generous. Meet Roy Escapa, author of The Cure for Alcoholism. He's going to explain the Sinclair Method, a treatment plan that has had a 75% success rate particularly because it allows for people to keep drinking without even the slightest reduction in amount. And in this audio, you'll hear all about it. You'll also hear the almost magic way this method works in combination with a pill called naltrexone, how to get a prescription, and why abstinence cannot be part of the equation. You'll learn the exploding myths about alcoholism and how this type of chemical dependence is formed. You'll learn how to talk to your doctor if you think this method could work for you. You'll learn the reasons other programs and drugs used to treat alcoholism don't work. You'll learn other diseases naltrexone can effectively treat, along with a list of people who cannot take naltrexone. You'll learn the real-life case studies of people who have used the Sinclair method and are either completely sober or are social drinkers now. Roy says willpower is a great solution for people who can stop without turning back, and this treatment would not be for them. But for anyone who thinks they might have a hard time with that plan, here's an alternative that may work. In this audio interview, explains it all. Hi, this is Chris Costello, and I've teamed up with Michael Senoff to bring you the world's best health-related interviews. So if you know anyone struggling with their weight, with cancer, diabetes, ADHD, autism, heart disease, or other health issues, send them over to Michael Senoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. Today we're talking with Roy Escapa, the author of The Cure for Alcoholism. Thanks so much for joining us. Can you kind of explain to people what you mean by the cure for alcoholism? That is a pretty bold statement, we have to say. It's a bold statement, and what they mean by that is that the individual starts out drinking, and they're not alcoholic to begin with, but if they have a genetic predisposition, they strengthen something called the opioid system in the brain. And once that occurs, has taken place over several years of drinking, it never goes away which is why they relapsed. Sinclair discovered something called the alcohol deprivation effect. This is where once addicted, the person, if they are deprived of alcohol, the craving increases and increases because the system, the software, so to speak, the wiring in the brain has remained intact for life. And that was one of the first main discoveries. The other thing was that alcohol works in a similar way, similar system to opiates things like morphine or heroin, that when we drink alcohol, there's a release of endorphins, which are the body's natural opiate-like substances. And it's due to these in susceptible people, in people who've inherited the predisposition, that the system gets much strengthened over time. And that system, until now, until Sinclair's method, has not been reversible. What we mean by cure is that at the end of the treatment, pretty much after three to four months on average, with the person taking the medication and drinking at the same time, the system becomes weaker and is reversed, it's removed. So the brain is actually restored to the condition it was in before the addiction was developed. It actually rolls back the addiction. The addictive mechanism in the brain to its original pre-addictive state before the first drink was consumed. So that's why it's a bold claim, and this has been shown in animals. Their brains have been examined before and after treatment, and we can see it in people. Either they abstain, about one-third of the patients abstain, and this is a lot of patients we're talking about in many clinical trials, or they carry on drinking but within safe limits, socially acceptable and safe limits. They are now able to choose, whereas before the only way was just abstain as best you could, do whatever you could not to have a drink, go to AA, go to rehab, do whatever, but don't have another drink. That was correct until now because the brain was not curable. You could not cure the addiction in the brain until things 
they came up with these methods. You have a chapter in your book called The Human Cost of That. What is the human cost? Well, alcoholism has been with us since ancient times, and it's caused problems not for everybody. The human cost on a worldwide scale is that 1.8 million people, according to the World Health Organization, die from it every year. And in the United States, about 105,000, according to the American Medical Association. It's a huge cost. It is the single biggest drain on society health-wise in the States. It costs almost $200 billion, $187 billion, which is equivalent to two-thirds of the Pentagon's 2003 budget. If you add up all the lost work days, the car accidents, the medical illnesses, the broken home, it's a massive cost on society, a massive drain. Broken marriages, families, abandoned children, drunken driving, it's huge, absolutely huge. This has been studied by the U.S. government, by the NIAAA, which is the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, the National Institute on Drug Abuse, NIDA, and the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration Office of Applied Studies, SAMHSA. They find data, for example, like approximately 7% of Americans aged 18 and older at 17.8 million have a drinking problem. Of these, 1.8 million are clear alcoholics way down the line. They've lost complete control over their drinking. Where's that line with alcoholism? It's not a very clear line. People generally get a sense of when they've lost control, and it doesn't seem to happen immediately. There are things like blacking out, saying things that they regret, feeling terrible, having terrible hangovers, feeling that they are craving alcohol. These are the main sorts of issues. It's not, you know, one day you're an alcoholic and then the next day you're not. In fact, nobody walks into a bar age 21, orders a drink and is an alcoholic or steals it from their parents' cabinet and has the first drink and they're an alcoholic. It's something that's now generally considered to be learned, it's accepted that it is a learned phenomenon. It requires two things to develop. You need to have a genetic predisposition, the biology, and you have to drink not once but many times over much time. And then that produces the system in the brain, the biology of addiction, that keeps on driving. It's very much like a new thirst is developed. We all are born with a thirst for water. If we're in the desert for 72 hours, and we haven't had water and somebody puts water in front of you, it's virtually impossible to refuse it. The craving is overwhelming. And this is what happens eventually with alcoholics, with people who become addicted. The longer they're abstain, often people try on their own and say, oh, I won't drink tonight, and they don't. And they can go for a few days, but eventually, very much like dieting, they will pray to the overwhelming urge craving and they have a drink. Usually at that point, they drink far more than they would have. There is no clear line on when one is an alcoholic. There are lots of tests that are used, lots of questionnaires that have been developed, but there's no absolute clear line as to when one. More or less best to think of it as having lost control over one's drinking. And that can be fairly mild in the case of excessive social drinking, or it can be out and out clear alcoholism where people wake up at 3 in the morning to have a drink because otherwise they will go into withdrawal. Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini-seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard-hitting, mind-blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource anywhere Anywhere on the internet or on the planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word for word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse some more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.